Let's close eyes. Let us invite the presence of the Holy Spirit amongst us. Welcome Holy Spirit. We are in your presence. Fill us with your Once again, welcome Holy Spirit. Welcome Holy Spirit. We are in your presence. We are in your presence. Fill us with your power. Fill us with your power. Oh, live inside of live me. Inside of inviting the living waters into us so that the power of the living waters will enrich us will will strengthen us will enlighten us we are not meant to be children of darkness we are meant to be children of light and so that we remain the children of light through the power of the holy spirit we might be enlightened we pray you're Lord. the living water Never drawing fire. Never drawing fire. Comforter and counselor. Comforter and counselor. Take complete control. Take complete control. Fill us with your power. Fill us with your power. Oh, Live inside of me. Live inside of me. Speak to us, O Spirit of God. Let the word enlighten our hearts and our minds. Humble us, Spirit of God. For in humility we respond to you. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verses 1 onwards. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them and a tongue rested on each one of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed Mother, intercede and pray for us. Hail Mary, full of, full grace. of grace, the Lord, the Lord is with thee. Blessed, blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed, and blessed is the fruit of thy Jesus. womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Holy Mary Mother, of God, Mother of God, pray for, pray us, for sinners, us sinners, now, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Kindly be seated. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Good morning, dear friends. How are you? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 
they have restricted my ability to move. <laughs> this is how you, in, in India, we tie the cows like this. <laughs> so that they have only a particular diameter in which they can actually move around. Praise the Lord. Praise Hallelujah. 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 How are you feeling? Good. Did you have a blessed feast of the Blessed Mother? Yes, yes that's good. Um, sometimes you pass through uh, some of your churches. Here you have churches, uh, you know, like you have houses. <laughs> There's, it's just everywhere. And then, and then you'll see a feast somewhere. And then you ask them, what's the feast? And they'll say, Mother Mary's feast. And this whole month, it's been every church you see, there's been Mother Mary's feast. She was born on 8th of September, but every day still she's being born in all our parishes. It's always lovely to celebrate um, anything to do with the Blessed Mother, and that's why we are here as well. We ask for her intercession and prayers. It's, it's an amazing feeling to have, to know that we have a mother who has been assigned to pray for us. Not just a mother who wants to pray for us. That's, that's um, another reality, that she wants to pray for us. But a mother who has been assigned by Jesus to pray for us. That is a privilege. And that is not something that we get as a right. That is a privilege that has been given to us. And the Blessed Mother responds to her son's call. Behold your, behold your children. Behold your son. Behold your daughter. So we are blessed as we celebrate these days, uh, this whole month. There are so many, um, there are so many uh, feasts of the Blessed Mother. And it's all pointing towards... All pointing towards Jesus. Don't get it wrong. None of the feasts of the Blessed Mother is a celebration of the Mother. It is a celebration of, of Jesus. Mary's importance always revolves around Jesus. Mary doesn't want an importance if she doesn't have, have Jesus. So if, if the Blessed Mother is, has been even chosen by God the Father to, um, uh, to, to conceive his son in her womb, that means the Father knows how much, how much of spirituality the, the Blessed Mother has. And that kind of a person who's so filled with spirituality, will they ever have a spirituality that is oriented towards the self? No, it's just impossible. It's impossible for a person with that kind of a spirituality to have a desire to have everything aimed towards themselves. So for the Blessed Mother, everything is aimed towards, towards Jesus. So every message of the Blessed Mother, even after, through all the apparitions, Lourdes or Fatima, wherever you go, it is always directed towards, towards Jesus. We should never forget that. In the midst of all, all the arguments people come up with, the, the fact that we have a mother whose love and passion has always been her beloved son. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So every time we are celebrating these feasts, we are celebrating Jesus. We are celebrating what Jesus gave as an assignment to the Blessed Mother. Sometimes you can have assignments and when you, when you, what you look forward to is your assignment to get over. So now I'm doing my, my studies, I'm doing my treaties at present, I'm waiting when I can finish it. You know, first of all, to finish it, you have to work hard. It's not easy to do it because it's your assignment and you have to do it. Some of you are, um, you know, you're working, you look forward to the day when you can retire. My assignment is, oh, my pension will come in and then I can be at peace. Imagine this poor blessed mother. That assignment is never going to get over unless and until this world is wound up till the end. So she has a continuous assignment and she does it with great joy because she's doing it for Jesus and she's doing it for his beloved. Who does he look at on the cross? Who does he look at? He looks at John, the, the beloved disciple. He looks at the beloved and then he gives his mother. So who is the beloved? 
Who? I can't hear you people. You, uh, I heard one of the buses stopped in the wayside to have some breakfast. I know that one, at least one bus, at least they have some energy in them. The others, I don't know about you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So who are the beloved? We. We are the beloved. So the mother's assignment to his beloved. That's us. And it's constant. Every day, every minute, every hour. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. In the gospel passage, we, or the, um, uh, the reading we read is from Acts of the Apostles. The apostles who sat at, in the upper room and prayed during the day of Pentecost and tongues of fire comes down upon them. And they are filled with the power and presence of the Holy Spirit. Now, Mary's role at Pentecost is very clearly recorded. It says that the disciples and all, all the disciples together were praying along with the, along with the, I can't hear you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Is this the time you generally go to church for mass? Because, you know, generally when you go to church, you have this tendency to, you know, fall asleep. Because it happens every Sunday, then you think, okay, this is a Sunday, it's time now. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. You're sounding very dull. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, how many of you are coming here for the first time? Can you raise your hands? Oh, so many of you. Okay. I'm very sorry. Praise the Lord. I'm Father Michael. I'm a Vincentian priest. I reside here in the retreat center. And there's only one thing I require of you. Those who've come uh, here before, you already know it. But those who are new, there's only, you're most welcome to this retreat center. We love you a lot. I love you a lot. I'm so happy to see you over here. There's only one thing I require of you. I need you to smile. Whatever else you do over here, I don't mind. But I need you to smile during my session. It's very, very important. I cannot go through a talk looking at a set of depressed faces. <laughs> so I need you to smile during this session. Even if you're not listening to me and you're looking right through my face and thinking about what lunch is going to be, I don't mind. It's perfectly fine with me. You can do that as long as you do it with a smile. So maybe the smile is because you're thinking the lunch will be amazing. That's also fine with me. I have no problem. Use whatever the reason be, but you have to smile during my sessions. Can you do that much? Yes. Oh, thank you very much. Praise the Lord. So Mother Mary's role in, during the Pentecost is very clear. The scriptures say the disciples were seated in the upper room. Uh, and they were, they were praying along with the Blessed Mother. She was there as well. Now, what has Mary actually done? Without us even realizing it, what has the Blessed Mother done? Because that is what she does for all of us as well. How many people were there in the upper room? Does it say that the apostles were in the upper room or does it say the disciples were in the upper room? Okay. Praise the Lord. Then why do you say that there were only 11 or some said 13? Uh, um, 13 must be the Blessed Mother as well. I'm presuming you in, uh, included the Blessed Mother and the, and the 12. Where did the 12th one come from? Where did the 12th one? How many of you said 11? This is another thing I have a problem with. You say something and then you don't, you don't accept what you said. And it's supposed to be a church service. <laughs> Very truthful and honest people. Today's gospel passage, by the way, is about honesty. You know that, right? Very good. Praise God. So how many of you said 11? 11 were there in the upper room. Oh, okay, very good. How many of you said 13 were there in the upper room? No, because the ones who said 13 made more sense than the ones who said 11. Because just before the Pentecost reading is them choosing Matthias. So the 12 were already there. And then you add the Blessed Mother, it's 13. So that makes more sense than the 11. So the ones who thought you got the 11 right, I'm very sorry to tell you, you got that wrong. 
But any which ways, both sets have got it wrong because the scripture tells us in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, verse 14, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, verse 14, all these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Sorry, verse 15. In those days, Peter stood up and among, stood up among the believers about 120 persons in all. So how many were there now? Ah, very good. Praise the Lord. So 120 of them were there. Where were they? In the upper room. How many of you have gone to, to Israel? Okay. How many of you have seen that upper room? Okay. You saw how big it is? Or you saw how, at least how small it is? Fit 120 people into that. And mind you, these are 120 people who are in hiding. Because Jesus has been crucified. So all of them are in the upper room, not because they love coming together like it is over here and they just enjoy being together. Rather, they are there because they are in fear. They are being hunted. And that is why they are in the upper room. So all of them, when we say 120 needed to be fit inside there, we are not saying that you know, some of them will be seated outside. They can't be seated outside. They can't be seen outside. So fit 120 people. Uh, uh, for those of you who haven't gone, I think that upper room space would be till that first, first row from where I'm standing, maybe a little more than that, uh, to that first row is how much the upper room space would have been. And then fit 120 people inside there. What do you think would happen? What do you think would happen? Okay, I will explain it to you in a different way. How many of you have more than three children? Can you raise your hands? How many of you have three or more than three? Can you raise your hands? Okay, good. Praise the Lord. Now your three children, uh, do they have three different rooms? Yes? Okay. Now try one fine day to tell your three children you're not getting three different rooms. You all have to adjust in one room. Sometimes, you know, the days when your guest comes home and then, and then they are shifted out. And then when the guest comes, the children look like innocent angels. And then the guest thinks, you know, they're so nice, so magnanimously they, they gave up their room so that this, this priest can stay for his ministry or this guest can stay. They don't see all the grumbling that took place before. <laughs> Isn't that true? So three people try fitting them into one room who are brothers and sisters, try fitting them into one room and you will not get peace in the house. 120 people inside the upper room. They are people who are filled with fear. They are people who are confused. They don't know what has happened after choosing Jesus and, what, and, and choosing to follow Jesus. And now everything has fallen apart. You've got to understand what their whole mindset is. Their mindset is not like it is a time when everything is comfortable. You know, Jesus is working miracles and there's lots of popularity and people are flocking and they are the ones who are acceptable. No, everything has changed. With the death of Jesus, everything has changed. So no more are the miracles important. No more is the multiplication of the loaves important. The high point of everyone's gossip is... Is? What is the latest news? You people are so scared to make mistakes. So you're not giving answers at all. So um, that's another thing I would do. I ask a lot of questions during the sessions. So when I ask the questions, it's not because I want to know how much you know. It's just my way of preaching. That's all. Bear up with me. I just need some answer. It can be the right answer, wrong answer. I'm not bothered what it is. As long as I get some answer. Praise the Lord. And... 
I will wait and wait and wait and wait till you give me that answer. I won't just go on. Now you can think to yourself, you want to wait, you wait. I'm not bothered. <laughs> But after this session happens to be your tea. You want tea, you give me my answers. <laughs> Or else you're not going to get your tea. <laughs> the next session will just start. That's all. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. So what was my question? I forgot my question. Yes what was the news what was the in news come on we are all people who love gossiping we should know what news happens it is you don't speak about by the way i didn't say that gossiping is okay i just uh, it was just a sarcastic way of putting it sorry so um you don't speak about old news you speak about new what's the most um what's the most recent news Jesus has been crucified the guy who called himself the son of god has been has been crucified that's what everyone's going to talk about and now if everyone's going to talk about this you don't want to be amongst these people so now you have a set of people who chose Jesus chose to walk with Jesus and now they are mentally they are disturbed they are lonely they are hunted down and they are fit into a small room where they don't have any space praise the lord so the whole mentality is different their physicality is challenged everything is challenged and they are sitting in the upper room praise the lord if your three children cannot sit in one room as brothers and sisters and not fight don't you think these 120 would have had a problem surely they would surely they would now for these kind of environments you need a leader isn't that true who is the leader like who is the leader who was elected who was appointed the leader peter 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 was appointed the leader but the problem is this leader's credibility has taken a good beating why everyone knows about it that jesus had told peter you will you will deny me and what is interesting is peter responded with bombastic words you know sometimes you should be very humble you know keep quiet that's better because when you make the mistake at least everyone will not quote what you quoted before so this when jesus told him you will deny me peter he said i will never deny you and now he has denied jesus thrice don't you think all that 120 would know what peter has done so the credibility has a beating there so peter is not in that stage as yet so we have a set of of people who are confused who are troubled who are disturbed and there is one binding factor a single lone binding factor in the upper room and that is the blessed mother the only one all the others are meant to be in the upper room they are meant to wait on in jerusalem because jesus said you have to wait in jerusalem till you are till you receive the holy spirit what does that mean what do you presume from that till you receive the holy spirit which means you have not yet received so the 120 say if it's a perfect number 120 119 of them do not have the holy spirit there's only one the blessed mother she becomes the binding factor in that family she becomes the reason why they all pray together praise the lord hallelujah hallelujah So we can never undermine the role of the blessed mother on Pentecost. The moment she sat with them and the moment she prayed, first Acts of the Apostles chapter 1 verse 14. The word says, "All these, that is um John, James, Andrew, um Matthew, Alphaeus, son James, all son of Alphaeus, Simon, Judas, James, all these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer." together with certain women including Mary the mother of Jesus praise the lord hallelujah 
it doesn't say including other women and then starting to quote all the other women but the scripture quotes whom yes the quote is for the blessed mother because there is a very significant role she's playing there in the upper room just before pentecost why because unlike peter who is not yet filled with the holy spirit unlike all the other disciples who have not yet experienced the power of the holy spirit remember what the angel said you you will conceive and bear a son you will be filled with a holy spirit you will be filled with the holy spirit and you will conceive and and bear a son only the sole figure who was there filled with the power of the holy spirit was the blessed mother she became the binding factor amongst the disciples hallelujah 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 thank you jesus praise you jesus and all throughout even today the blessed mother remains the binding factor of all disciples she keeps everyone together and focused on to on to jesus the moment the focus is not jesus where does the focus turn to praise the lord you want tea praise the lord i'm very sadistic can't i <laughs> praise the lord so um when the moment the 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 moment the spirit is not there who does the focus turn towards the self and that can be within our church our church communities our prayer groups within our own families the moment the presence of the holy spirit is not there the focus is not there when the focus is not jesus the focus always is the is the self praise the lord hallelujah hallelujah the focus of every disciple is to what is the disciple called to what is the disciple called to the disciple is called to die to the the self that is christian discipleship that is what jesus says when they when they uh, james and john wanted that power and position jesus said you are called to you're called to serve not to be served so for a disciple if you are called to if you are called to serve you are called to die to your yourself praise the lord hallelujah hallelujah so jesus is inviting all of us to die to ourselves but if the presence of the holy spirit is not there the focus on jesus will not be there when the focus of jesus is not there then the focus will be on the on the self all those 119 of them the focus was on them selves praise the lord hallelujah hallelujah and once you have someone focusing on themselves then you have bitterness bickering anger you see that so often we get to see that within our own christian communities we get to see that within our own parish communities yes or no yes we all supposed to be in unity praise the lord in india we have a very famous saying unity in diversity because we are so so diverse and we we keep speaking about that everywhere we get a chance we say oh we are in india we are unity in diversity the only thing is we claim unity but we are all in diversity we are all different so different and we are so so sometimes so broken from each other but it's important for us to realize what the disciples were called to what each disciple is called to we are called to to unity to be of one heart one mind we read in in the we read in first sorry ephesians chapter 4 ephesians chapter 4 verses 4 onwards there is one body and one spirit just as you were called to the one hope of your calling one lord one faith one baptism one god and father of all who is above all 
through all and in all. Hallelujah. Can you read that for me? And Zil put it up. That's Ephesians chapter 4 verses 4 to 6. Can we read that together? One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all, through all, and in all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we are called to one faith, to one baptism, to that oneness as disciples. But the moment the presence of the Holy Spirit is not there, the focus will, will change. And the focus will come upon ourselves. Now what the Blessed Mother did over there was a set of people who were so disjointed. Don't you think that in the midst of, what, of them being in the upper room, somewhere in their thought there would have been, aren't you the one who denied him? Aren't you the one who betrayed him? Aren't you the one who did this? Didn't you not do that? They would have looked at Thomas and said, Thomas was the one who made a very, very powerful statement in John chapter 11. When Jesus says he's going to Jerusalem, what does Thomas say? What does Thomas say? Thomas doesn't say many words. So if you hit out the three sentences he said, you'll get one right. What did Thomas say? We will go and, and die with him. When Jesus, it was time to die, what happened? No, Thomas. Thomas is gone. Praise the Lord. Don't we also say that sometimes? Lord, I am so passionately in love with you. The moment the first problem comes up, we've also gone like Thomas. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So in the midst of all those 119 of them, I'm just saying 119 because I'm taking the 120 number. So Mother Mary being the 120th. So the 119 of them would have been so disturbed, so troubled, and the binding factor became the Blessed Mother. Dear brothers and sisters, it's so important for us to realize Wherever there is discord, wherever there's a disconnect, wherever there is a selfish attitude within our ministries, within our families, within our discipleship, it is important for us to see and ask for the intercession of the Blessed Mother. She will sit with that community and keep them together till the power of the Holy Spirit empowers them and keeps them focused. That is a role. That is what she does. And that is where we need to invite the, invite the Blessed Mother to be with our communities. And that can be within our churches, the universal church, or it can be within our domestic churches. You know what your domestic church is, right? Yes or no? You know, I've just finished on... on, on Friday we had a Sinhala retreat, right? I wasn't well, so I didn't take a session. But uh, we had yesterday a Tamil retreat. Uh, the hall was full as well. And then I'm have, now we have the, the English retreat. So which is going to leave the taste behind? What you eat last is what gives you the taste, right? Isn't that true? Yes. Praise the Lord. Yesterday's taste was very good. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, don't feel bad when I say this, but we, we do our retreats in the Divine Retreat Center in Porta. How many of you have been to Porta? Okay. So uh, over there, we do it in seven different languages, all um, uh, six of them in Indian languages, and one of them is English. And when we go for services to all the different stages, the best places to go is to these regional languages. They have very simple faith. They respond with a simple heart. The hardest to get through is in the English stage. It is all from here. <laughs> By the time it gets processed inside here and then comes inside here, there's very little left. Praise the Lord. So when you're in the presence of the Lord, stop processing through here, process through 
here. Stop responding through here. Respond through here. Respond like Bartimaeus responded. The blind man Bartimaeus in the Bible, he was a beggar sitting by the roadside. What does he do when Jesus is passing by? He screams out. And what do the others who respond from here said? Keep quiet. But yet for Bartimaeus, everything came from here. And he cried out even more loudly, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. When you're in the presence of Jesus, always respond from the heart, not from the intellect. Whatever you and I try with the intellect, we are never going to comprehend Jesus. It's an impossibility. Stop wasting your time and your brain power to comprehend Jesus. There's no other person about whom so much has been written in books than Jesus. And yet, we cannot comprehend the Lord. Respond with the heart. And then you will experience. You won't comprehend him, but you will experience the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. So these disciples who sat over there, their binding factor became the Blessed Mother. Dear friends, it's important for us as well. We in church communities or even in our domestic churches, that is your homes, which is your domestic churches, are all unique individuals. We carry our own baggage. We carry our own luggage with us. And therefore, when we come into a community, when we come into a group, be it a prayer group, be it a church community, be it, be it an office community, be it your house community, we will come in with our own, own luggage. And where do we dump this luggage? Where do we dump the luggage? We have to dump it on someone. We can't carry it. Have you, I don't, I don't know how trains over here are, but if you really want a train experience, you should go to Mumbai, India. It's amazing to get into those trains. They are packed. Not an ant can move inside. Even in Sri Lanka? Not an ant can get in? I challenge you to get into a Mumbai train during peak time traffic. And then, and then I want you to see what the difference is. You don't have to, you don't have to try to get out. You just have to stand somewhere around the door. They will push you out. Even if it's not your station, you will be pushed out. There's no chance you can actually get back inside. And, and imagine in that kind of a situation, someone comes with a bag. Bag means you're taking one person's space. So all the bad words will be directed towards you. Because you have that bag. And then when you have that bag, I'm saying that is because I was one of those characters. Foolishly, once I carried a bag. And then because everyone can see it, they were becoming abusive. And so they are, they are they're giving it to me left, right, and center. And these are all giants. And they're looking down and they're they are screaming at me. You know my size. I'm only this much. So I can, I'm looking up and these are towering over me. And they're busy in Hindi. They're telling me, why, you, why did you come with this bag? So that I had to hide it, I took it out and tried to put it down. Down, it's even worse. Everyone's standing on one leg. <laughs> you know, like these pelicans stand sometimes. Oh, is it the pelicans or oh, the flamingos, I think. They're the ones who stand on the one leg. And I'm trying to put it on. I can see everyone, only one leg. Everyone else's other leg is on top. And it's that one leg. But then I had to push it. I pushed it onto someone's because only that person will then take out all that anger on me. If the bag is on top, everyone else can see it. All that anger is coming on me. That's how we all are. Don't worry. This is just a physical bag, but we are all like that. When we have baggage, we take it out on, on others. When we come into a community, we take it out on others. When, when you have a parish priest or a priest, let's forget parish priest, a priest who comes and you see me very grumpy and I'm angry and I look at my sister, she's suddenly feeling sleepy and I tell her, why are you sleeping? Can't you go, you, couldn't you sleep at home and come, come here to sleep all the time? What kind of a person are you? What am I basically doing? Something has happened there and that baggage is being taken out here. We do that. We do that in our church communities. You do that very well in your house as well. 
I come back from home work after working so hard. Is this what you're doing? Basically, what's the problem? The problem is at work. Where are you dumping it? You're dumping it onto your children or you're dumping it onto your spouse. We're all people who carry burdens. We carry baggages and then we dump it in communities. That is what leads to divides. Now, if I as a priest say that to my sister, don't you think that she will always struggle coming into this community? Yes, because now she's wounded. This is where I say it's important we ask the Blessed Mother to keep us together. She becomes the binding factor when we are not being inspired by the Holy Spirit because we are not asking for the Holy Spirit. She will keep us bound together till the moment we are filled with the Holy Spirit. Once the Spirit takes control, then she knows everything's fine. She wasn't there with the disciples at every prayer meeting. No. But at the one when they desperately needed it, she was there. I remember going to, um, uh, for a retreat. I'm not going to tell you which place this is because it's connected to a parish. Um, but I went for a retreat to, to a particular place and I met a parish priest who came there to this retreat place. He came with a request. He told me, Father, can you just come and give one session to my, my leadership group in the parish? I said, Father, it's nearly impossible. The retreat starts at 8 a.m. in the morning. It finishes at around 9 o'clock at night. So I said, after that, I don't have time. I don't have time in between. And the day I finish the retreat, I'm going back. He said, please, you've just got to come and spend maybe just two hours with these, this leadership group. I said, Father, after 9 o'clock, what's the two hours? <laughs> he said, Father, please, keep begging, keep begging. And I said, okay, I'll come. And so I finish the retreat at 9 o'clock at night. And then I go to this parish. 9.30, we are supposed to start the session. So I went over there. It's a leadership group of maybe around 60, 70 of them. And um, even before I started the session, you know, people came and greeted me. As they came, each one came and greeted. They said, Father, you should speak. Someone from the charismatic group came and told me, Father, you should speak about how it is important to praise God. These people don't praise God at all. So you should speak about that. I smiled. Then after some time, someone else came up and said, Father, you should Tell them, they don't send children for catechism classes. You should tell them about this. We have this all the time. When we come for a session, someone will come and tell us, Father, you should speak about this. Father, you should speak about that. Father, you should speak about this. So nearly 10 people came and told me. Anyway, we started the session. As I started the session, I could make out there is a big discord in that community. Amongst the 70 odd people that were there, big discord. And it reached a height because everyone's, everyone's, fidgety during the session. They're not sitting in place and they're they are all fidgeting around the place till one person got up and went and stand, sat behind. And I realized it's because he was not happy with who he was sitting next to. And so he's got up and he's gone and sat behind. I couldn't go through the session. So I stopped. I, I told them I just need a five minute break. I went to the priest and I said, Father, I'm just not able to continue. Can we go into an adoration? And Father said, Father, you do anything. And he smiled and I told him, Father, there is no peace amongst them. He said, that is why I called you. He said, I'm struggling with this group. There is just no unity amongst them. They look at each other and there's so much of bickering and fighting that they have with each other. So I said, okay, Father, we'll go for the adoration. And, and I told them we will have the adoration. They were all very happy that we are going for the adoration. As I started the adoration, I told them we'll start with the rosary. And we started praying the rosary. We started that rosary at the start of that adoration. That must have been around 9.50 or so. We finished that adoration around 11.30 or 11.45 and we didn't do anything else, but we prayed eight rosaries during that adoration. I couldn't do a thing. I couldn't, I couldn't lead them in the adoration. It was just not coming. And all I did during that one full uh, adoration was eight rosaries. 
we prayed and asked the Blessed Mother, please intercede, please intercede, please intercede to Jesus. That is all we did. I finished the session and I went back. This priest came for a retreat to our retreat center around two months later and he said, Father, an immense change within that parish community. The togetherness after that night's prayer is unbelievable. He said all of them joining with the others in whatever they are doing to be able to make this parish community a blessed community. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Sometimes we don't realize how she becomes a bonding factor. In your domestic church, in your families, if you're struggling, ask for her intercession. She will keep your family together. In your parish communities, in your prayer groups, if you're struggling, pray. Ask for her intercession. She will keep your family together. We are called to be a set of people who are in unity. As we had read in Ephesians chapter 4, we are called to be in unity. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 10. Now I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you be in agreement, that there be no divisions among you, that you be united in the same mind and the same purpose. You are called to be in the same mind and the, and the same purpose, that mind and purpose in being one with one with Jesus. We are called to be in unity. A Christian community's strength is that we are in unity. A Christian family's strength is that we are in unity. When Jesus says, when two of you agree on something and you pray for it, you will, will receive it. Either Jesus is a big fat liar or when Jesus says something, he means it. Which one do you believe? When he said it, he means it. When two of you agree on something. So where is the catch? Agree is the catch. Praise the Lord. Do we agree? Who agrees? When you are in unity, you agree. Be it in the family. Why is it? One of the most powerful forms of prayer is in the domestic church. When you as a family sit together for your family prayer, the word of God says when two of you agree on something and you pray for it, you will, you will receive it. When a family agrees and prays, the problem is, is the family in agreement? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If the wife wants to pray, Lord, please let my husband buy me that necklace. And the husband's prayers, oh Lord, I hope someone else buys that necklace before we get there. There is no, there is no agreement. Now obviously, this one I'm joking, it has nothing to do with the necklace. But even when you sit together in prayer as a family, how much do you agree with each other? Your agreement is your unity. If you don't have that agreement, if you don't have that unity and your family prayer has weakened, it is not the powerful machine it's meant to be, then it's important, ask the Blessed Mother, bind us and keep us together. She will intercede and pray, 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 intercede and pray till the power of the Holy Spirit rests upon you and brings you together in agreement. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What do you think happened with the church leaders in that parish? Somewhere in those rosaries that we prayed, she interceded and prayed, interceded and prayed, interceded and prayed, and somewhere without them realizing the power of the Holy Spirit has taken control of their heart. Anyone who is filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, they never think about themselves. That is why Mary never thought about herself. Just imagine sitting with those 119 people. One of them is one who has denied her son. The others are the ones who ran away and didn't support her son. That mother would have expected, my son is safe because... 
he has disciples around him when my family sends me over here they always ask me how are the people not because they want to know how you are they want to know how you are taking care of me my parents are interested in my welfare and they want to know who is there next to me who is there uh, do they provide things do they cook well one of the famous questions do they cook well they don't want my mother doesn't want to know how well they cook or if they are chefs they just want to know if i'm being fed she can ask me that directly so she asks how uh, do they cook well do they take care of you just imagine the blessed mother she expected that her son would be safe with him with them they all betrayed they all ran away and yet she sits in the midst of that 119 and she keeps them together she will do that for you and for your families your parish communities and your families she will do it but you've got to ask her to intercede all the time keep praying the rosary keep praying the rosary with your family sometimes you'll just feel that it is just an ejaculatory prayer you know we just repetitive prayer but every repetitive prayer that you are saying for her it is special i can say mama or mama a hundred times and i can get bored with it my mother will not get tired of listening to me saying mama your mother in heaven will not get tired you might be tired saying that repetitive rosary that just shows how weak we are it doesn't show how weak she is she is interceding and praying but you ask for that intercession and then she will see to it she keeps your family and your communities together till the powerful presence of the holy spirit comes and binds us and makes us focus together let's all stand in his presence let's close our eyes for a moment let's offer ourselves to jesus lord on the cross you gave us this beautiful gift you assigned your blessed mother to look after us to intercede for us to pray with us oh mother we ask for your intercession wherever our families our communities are disjointed broken divided intercede and pray for us like you kept the disciples together you prayed with them inspired by the holy spirit oh blessed mother pray with us pray with us as we offer our prayers for the intervention of the holy spirit within our families and our communities and our own personal lives mother you stand by us you intercede and pray for us help us be together so that our prayers made together will be prayers that will pierce the heavens the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen amen